So you may not want to hear this, but that dream Disney World resort you've been fantasizing about for your 2024 vacation may not live up to your expectations next year. Let's cover the hotels you're going to want to avoid booking a room for in 2024, today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney World's resorts can be one of the best parts of your trip. You got great restaurants, fun pools, over-the-top theming at some of these, and so many activities for you to take part in. But despite the resorts having a little something for everyone, not every resort is a one-size-fits-all, especially when it comes to a 2024 vacation. Now, today's video isn't gonna throw any particular resort under the bus for being bad. They're all great. It's just that some hotels might not be as desirable for you and your family to stay in next year over other resorts. And we wanna give you a heads up about those just so you don't wind up booking an expensive room and getting disappointed. If you wanna study up on each of the Disney World hotels without having to click between a whole bunch of Disney World website tabs to view them all, be sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen in front of you or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash hotels and you'll receive a full list of every Disney World hotel in one easy to view digital download and it's totally free. All right, we're gonna start out with what can be a very big surprise curveball for you if you go stay at some of these Disney hotels, and that's the heavy construction zones. Disney's been doing lots of renovations in their resorts ever since the COVID-19 closures. They kind of used that time to get some work done, and it's just kind of kept continuing. So there's a good chance that whenever you decide to go to Disney World, whether it be the end of this year, sometime next year, or even on into 2025, you're gonna see some sort of construction project going on since Disney tends to refurbish and reimagine and update their hotels pretty frequently, which is great. So we love seeing a lot of care being funneled into the upkeep of these hotels, but it can be frustrating to book a stay at a hotel that's currently under construction. Instead of that beautiful resort theming you've heard so much about, you'll be greeted by scaffolding and bulldozers and pardon our pixie dust walls. So while these resorts will be looking nice and dapper for the next set of guests, they're going to look like a hot mess for your trip. And that doesn't seem fair now, does it? While there could definitely be more construction notices to come for 2024, here's what we know about next year's resort construction projects so far. Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is currently constructing some new Disney Vacation Club villas set to open later in 2024. These are new rooms that are going to give Disney Vacation Club members more options for staying at the hotel, but they'll still be available for everyone to book once they're finished up later next year. But that means right now there's still a good chance you'll book a Polynesian Resort room and wake up to lots of bulldozers and industrial work right outside your window, which is the opposite of those private beachy vibes you might be after. And because of all this construction hoopla, if you want to walk from the Polynesian over to the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, you don't really have a good direct walkway right now. Instead, you have to walk alongside the road, which isn't just awkward, but also kind of dangerous, especially at night. But you can always take the monorail between resorts and avoid all of that. Disney's Fort Wilderness is also going to start seeing major DVC construction work next year. Disney Vacation Club has announced its plan to redesign the cabins across the resort, which means more than 350 refreshed cabins will replace the existing cabins you can book now. The proposed cabins will be available for everyone, including those who are not Disney Vacation Club members, and are set to open later in 2024. More than likely, these are going to close and be remodeled in phases, so you should be able to book one of the older cabins while construction work continues to take place. But keep in mind that depending on where the bulk of the construction is happening during your visit, you might wind up hearing lots of banging and clanging and beep beep beeping in the afternoons. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has already updated several of their guest rooms, but construction for the rest of these rooms is going to continue on until early 2024 and may also include the Grand Floridian Lobby as well. Disney's Boardwalk Inn should be wrapping up their room renovations and lobby updates within the next couple of months, but ongoing construction is still happening over at their up-and-coming table service location, the Cake Bake Shop. While the Cake Bake Shop was set to open in 2023, the time frame was recently pushed back to a spring 2024 release date instead. So while that shouldn't impact your room stay too much, it does mean that too early of a stay here in 2024 will mean you're going to miss eating at the new tea, cake, and sandwich shop entirely, and your boardwalk-in photos aren't going to look too great if you've got that big construction zone in the space. 
And finally, Disney's Copper Creek cabins at Wilderness Lodge are going to start undergoing refurbishments starting on April 21st, 2024. As Disney notes on its website, guests staying in cabins adjacent to those being refurbished will see and hear work during the daytime. Again, this is probably only the beginning of the construction work we're going to see around the hotels in 2024. In fact, there's a probability that more updates will be announced the closer we get to the new year. But Disney does their best to update guests about any and all refurbishment updates via their website, and we do too. So if you want the most recent lineup of Disney Resort updates, be sure to check out our What's New at the Disney World Hotels page on the DFB website for our most recent finds. I'll drop the link down in the description. Next up, let's talk about those pool closures because they can be a real, real bummer if you didn't realize they were closed at your hotel. For some of you, a pool closure is not going to be a big deal. For others, especially for those of you with younger kids who also equate pool time with vacation time, a pool closure could be the key reason why you decide not to book a certain Disney World resort. And being aware of it ahead of time wins the battle. So the more major pool closures for the resorts tend to happen around the beginning of each year. That way, the feature pool pools won't have to be closed for maintenance when the summer comes around. But this is Florida we're talking about here, and while the beginning of the season can get chilly, sometimes winter, early spring days can still serve up a nice pool day that you don't want to miss out on. Not to mention, Disney's pools are heated year-round, keeping them at a solid 82 degrees. So here are the beginning of the year pool closures happening in 2024 that we know so far. Over at Disney's Port Orleans Resort French Quarter, guests will be unable to access the Dublin Lagoon Pool from January 2024 to April 2024. Since French Quarter's only pool is the Dubloon Lagoon, guests will have to walk over and use the Old Man Island pool at Disney's Port Orleans Riverside Resort, or any of Riverside's quiet pools if they want to take a dip on vacation. And it's a little bit of a long walk if you just wanted to go to the pool. Over at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, the Fuentes del Moro pool will be undergoing routine maintenance as well from January 2024 to April 2024, which to be honest is one of the best parts about this resort, so that can be a major bummer to miss out on. You're still going to be able to take a dip in one of the Caribbean Beach's five leisure pools instead, but they are just like not as fun. Now, originally, Fantasia Pool over at Disney's All-Star Movies was going to undergo renovations next year, too, but those updates have been pushed back to the beginning of January 2025 to April 2025 instead. And I know this is a long ways away, but as you know, I still got to warn you about the major pool closure in 2025 because I want to give you as much time to prepare for this one as possible, and I'm going to mention it in every video that I can. Storm Along Bay, which is basically a mini water park shared between the Yacht and Beach Club resorts, will be closed for refurbishments between January and May 2025. So if that's the sole reason your family wants to stay at one of these resorts during your 2025 vacation, you're going to want to plan your trip for the second half of the year instead of the first, when you know for sure Storm Along Bay is going to be back up and running again. Believe me, it's worth it. Now, one of the best ways to save money on your upcoming Disney World hotel stay is to check on the special offers, deals, and discounts webpage for any savings opportunities you can apply to your trip most of the time. As it turns out, there are some hotel rooms that are very sneakily not always invited to Disney's money-saving discount club. Let's take a look at some of those current hotel discounts listed for 2024 so you can see what I mean. For the special offer that allows you to book early on select Disney resorts in the new year to save up to 25% off of your 2024 stay, it includes all resort rooms except any three-bedroom villas, the Tower Studios at Disney's Riviera Resort, the cabins at Copper Creek Villas and cabins at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, the bungalows at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, and the campsites at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. So this is a pretty standard list of hotels that are not included in a lot of Disney's discount schemes. So that's why you may want to avoid these particular hotel rooms and campsites if you're going to want to cash in on one of those major discounts. And if you're planning on using a U.S. military discount for a 2024 stay, you can book any Disney rooms except the Villa Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, the campsites at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort, Disney's Pop Century Resort, and Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. So this is why you always, always need to read the fine print before getting too excited about any of these resort promos, because the hotel you're wanting to stay at most may not be included in the discount rates, and those are hotels you don't want to choose. 
Now, let's talk about those hotels that have limited or less than great transportation services. No matter what resort you choose to stay at, Disney will provide you with complimentary transportation to help you get around property. While many resorts have multiple transportation options with access to the Skyliner, monorail, boats, or even walking paths that'll take you right to the parks, other resorts are bus only. That's not their fault, they didn't choose to be bus only, but bus only life chose them. And while the buses are still a great way to get around the parks without having to pay for ride shares or drive over with your own car, they're not gonna get you anywhere fast. So here's a list of resorts that only have bus transportation available to the parks. Note that the last three entries on this list actually have riverboat transportation over to Disney Springs as an alternative to the buses, but as far as the actual parks go, it's buses only. And even though the other resorts may have alternative transportation modes to select parks, they're still going to have to use buses for other ones, especially when it comes to Animal Kingdom, which only ever uses bus transportation anyways. So it may behoove you to stay at a hotel that's going to have more direct transportation methods to the park you're going to be hanging out at the most next year. However, that isn't always going to work out for you. I mean, take the monorail resorts, for instance. Monorail resorts can deliver you right up to the front gates of Magic Kingdom within minutes, and yet they're also extremely expensive, with the cheapest room options rarely dipping below the $600 mark. So if you are going to end up relying on that bus transportation, here are a few things you're going to need to keep in mind. First, factor in an hour for transportation, no matter where you're going. That may seem excessive, but you're not just counting transit time here. You're also going to need to schedule in time to wait for the bus to arrive, for the bus to load, to travel, to unload, and head inside wherever you're going. Moral of the story, it can be a much, much, much longer trip than you think. Also, this is the thing I always forget, that just getting to the front of the park isn't your goal. You're trying to get into the park and get to whatever ride, attraction, restaurant you need to get to at a specific time, right? So you're going to have to count in that travel time as well, budget for that, because for example, if you're going to Epcot and you're going in the main entrance and you need to get over to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure for your lightning lane that you booked, that can easily be a 10 to 20 minute walk, depending on how quickly you walk. So just getting to the front of the park is half the battle, but then you got to get to where you're going from there. So be sure to budget in that time because I never do and it's always a problem. Now, if you're trying to get to the parks for rope drop, budgeting extra time is also especially important. Even if a bus doesn't arrive until 45 minutes before the park opens, resort guests will begin lining up much earlier than that. So if you show up at the bus stop right at that 45 minute mark, then you might miss the first couple of buses altogether since they might fill up with people that got there before you. Also, beware the internal bus shuttles at those larger resorts. Old Key West, Saratoga Springs, Port Orleans, Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, they all have those internal bus shuttles since those resorts are made up of lots of different buildings. That means once you board one of their buses, your bus may have to stop at a few different stations before finally leaving to go to the parks. Or you may have to make a few stops on the way back to your room at the end of the night. These can also fill up quickly with people at other bus stops. So you may have to go through a few buses before one pulls up that you can actually get on as well. So there's really no way to avoid internal bus loops if you're planning on taking the bus out of one of these resorts. But this is something you also need to factor into your daily schedule since it could wind up taking you even longer to get where you need to go. And one of our most important tips right now is budgeting for ride shares. Instead of splurging on a super expensive hotel stay for the sake of transportation convenience, you might be better off just saving back some extra cash for potential Uber or Lyft rides instead for more private and more immediate trips over to the parks than what the buses can provide. While you might not want to use ride shares all the time, using them a few times here and there, especially if it's first thing in the morning and you need to get there for rope drop or you're late for a reservation or a lightning lane, then using these can be a major trip saver, especially when you're trying to make it to a dining reservation on time. If you are nervous to use Uber or Lyft for whatever reason, if you don't have experience with them or you're not sure about those services, then definitely try out the minivans. These are Disney owned and run ride shares that are accessed through the Lyft app. These are Disney cast members, Disney employees that are driving you around. The standards of their cars are very, very high. Each one has car seats for the kids that are up to a high standard and very safe. So if you're a little bit concerned about using typical ride shares, the minivans are more expensive, but they are extremely reliable. 
Now, sometimes hotels are going to be problematic with accessibility issues. Disney resorts can be super accommodating, but some of them, not so much. Take Disney's Caribbean Beach, for instance. Now, Caribbean Beach has a couple of different downfalls that make it tricky for guests to get around. For starters, there are no elevators at this resort. It's stairs and stairs only, even if you're in a third floor room. So if you have someone in your group with mobility differences, or even if you're a parent and you know you're gonna be carrying your tired kiddo up to bed after each long park day, only having stairs to rely on to get to your second or third story room is gonna be a big pain. It's a good idea to request a room on the bottom floor when you're doing your online check-in, but like we always warn y'all about, getting a specific room request fulfilled isn't always a guarantee. In a case like this, you're better off calling up Caribbean Beach directly to talk to a real live cast member and make sure that your request is put on file. Now, Caribbean Beach is also super spread out, meaning the room you're placed in could be way far away from all the main resort amenities like the feature pool and the restaurants and the gift shop and the Skyliner stations. This same sort of situation is also the downfall of resorts like Old Key West and Saratoga Springs. Animal Kingdom Lodge can be pretty spread out and Coronado Springs. As cool as these resorts can be, if you're placed in a room that's way out in the boonies, then getting around might be more than half the battle for you and your group each and every day. If mobility is a major concern for your party, you may want to consider booking a more compact Disney World resort, like Port Orleans French Quarter, Wilderness Lodge, Riviera, or another hotel where you know all your amenities and resources won't ever be too terribly far away from where your room is. I stayed at Wilderness Lodge with my mom when we were using a wheelchair for her, and it worked out just fine. And in the case of some resorts, like the Contemporary, for instance, just be mindful of which hotel room you're booking in the first place. While a main tower room will put you right in the main building with all the restaurants and shops and monorail access, the Garden Wing rooms are going to put you a little ways away from those amenities, which can be frustrating if you're booking a room here solely to be inside that main Contemporary resort A-frame. Okay, so how about rooms that are way too pricey for what you actually get? Now, I'm not saying these rooms are a ripoff, but they can feel like one if you don't know exactly what you're paying for ahead of time. So Disney hotels vary not just in theming, but in room style too, and the different room styles will impact how much you're going to wind up paying for your stay. While there's really no such thing as a cheap Disney hotel stay, some of the rooms you might end up booking could wind up being way too expensive with not enough payoff for your particular group. Let's take, for instance, Disney's Riviera Resort. Now, Riviera is gorgeous, like it's breathtaking, but it's still the most expensive resort you can stay at along the Skyliner route. And if you book a studio room at the Riviera for your party of two, you're not just getting an expensive room, you're getting a tiny room too. Let me put this in perspective for you. A standard room over at Disney's Pop Century Resort, which is a value resort, which has the smallest rooms, can sleep up to four people. It's also got Skyliner access and it's about 260 square feet. Normally prices for these standard rooms are around 190 to $250 per night. But the Riviera, where you're gonna be paying for the bougie factor, has a tower studio room that will sleep up to two guests, has Skyliner access and is about 255 square feet, making it one of the smallest rooms you can book on Disney property. This studio is so itty bitty that the bed has to fold into the wall for the couch to exist. And when the bed is folded down for the night, there goes the couch right underneath it. The price for a tower studio like this, 400 to $700 plus per night. And yeah, get this, that's the cheapest Riviera room you can book. The bigger the space, the higher the price point. That means you're gonna wind up spending the same amount of money for a room at the Riviera as you would a stay in a deluxe resort over in the Epcot area, like Boardwalk Inn or Swan and Dolphin or Yacht and Beach, which are all within walking distance of Epcot and Hollywood Studios. So let that one sink in. The Riviera is a luxurious place to stay, even in the teeny tiny rooms, especially if you're planning on celebrating an anniversary or honeymoon. So if you really wanna stay at the Riviera, it might be more worthwhile to rent DVC points through a reliable third-party website. We always work with David's DVC rentals and purchase a stay that way instead of booking a room directly through Disney. To find out more about how DVC rental sites work and how they can save you major money on your next DVC stay, be sure to check out our video, The Disney World Hotel Secret That Could Save You Hundreds, right after this. So here's the thing for this next one. Booking a hotel based on its restaurants alone can be a big mistake, especially if that's literally the only reason you're spending hundreds of dollars to book a room there. But being in proximity to the resort restaurants you're most excited to try can definitely become an important deciding factor for where you end up staying. Well, 
While anyone is allowed to book a reservation for a hotel restaurant, whether they're staying at that hotel or not, let's not forget about what we just got done discussing, transportation issues. Because if you're staying at one Disney resort, but you want to dine at another, a good chunk of your day could wind up being spent on travel time and travel time alone. Because remember, Disney doesn't have buses that go between the hotels. You have to go to a park or Disney Springs and then transfer to a bus for the hotel you're on your way to. For example, let's say I'm staying at Disney's All-Star Sports next year, but I want to travel over to the Boardwalk Inn to eat at the brand new Cake Bake Shop once it finally opens. So here's where that no direct buses comes into play. If you're traveling from your All-Star Sports Hotel, you're first either going to have to take a bus over to Disney Springs or one of the parks, then you're going to have to get off and transfer to a Boardwalk Inn bus from there. So while it's not necessary to have your room in close vicinity to the resort restaurants you're most looking forward to trying, it's definitely very, very convenient to have them nearby. So which resorts do I love staying in just to be steps away from really good food at all times? Well, Disney's Polynesian. Village Resort. That's going to give you a tropical spread of adventurous eats and drinks at Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, Ohana, Tambu Lounge, Captain Cook's, Kona Cafe, and Pineapple Lanai. And Disney's Wilderness Lodge has tons of comfort food and rustic settings while you dine at places like Artist Point. That's my favorite character meal because the food is absolutely delicious. Geyser Point Bar and Grill, Territory Lounge, Whispering Canyon Cafe, and Roaring Fork. And Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is going to bring the African flavors and culture directly to you over at Sanaa, Boma, Jico, the Mara, and Victoria Falls Lounge. And Disney's Coronado Springs provides you with Spanish-inspired cuisine, as well as lounge bites and tapas across not just Coronado Springs, but Grand Destino Tower, too. And here, you'll be able to dine and drink at Three Bridges Bar and Grill, Toledo, Tapa Steak and Seafood, Rick's Sports Bar and Grill, Barcelona Lounge, Dahlia Lounge, El Mercado de Coronado, and Maya Grill. Now, this might be hard to believe, but this list is only barely scratching the surface of of how many different restaurants are available for you to dine at across the Disney hotels. That's why we wrote the DFB Guide to Disney World Dining. That's going to hook you up with honest food reviews, full color pictures, and our very best dining recommendations in the context of everything else you want to do in Disney World, all in one digital download. You're going to find our collection of tips and strategies from decades worth of Disney World vacations that you can use to apply to your 2024 vacation too. And guess what else? We've got special discount codes just for our DFB viewers. So when you head over to dfbstore.com, make sure to type in code YouTube to save some money before you check out. And remember, these books are totally guaranteed. If they don't work for you and you don't like them, no problem. We're going to give you your money back. No questions asked. Now, Disney's resorts might have accommodations for bigger groups, but that doesn't always mean they're going to be the most accommodating. Deluxe resorts feature one to three bedroom villas and suites to book for groups of five plus guests or more, but these accommodations are super expensive. And the more guests you've got in your group, the more expensive it's going to be. If you're trying to find more affordable lodging for your bigger travel group, here's what I recommend doing instead of automatically defaulting to the deluxe resorts. First, check out the family suites over at Disney's All Star Music. While these rooms only sleep up to five guests, they're also the cheapest suite option you're gonna find on Disney property. You might even be able to book two all-star music suites right next to each other and still pay around the same price or even less than say a two bedroom villa at some place like Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort. So let's do the math here. All-star music suites tend to range around 300 to $450 per night, which is a steal. Meanwhile, a two bedroom villa at Bay Lake Tower over at the Contemporary Resort is gonna be about 1200 to $2,000 dollars per night. So even when All Star Music suites get to be at their highest price point, you can still pay for two rooms for around 900 bucks, which is going to accommodate 10 people total versus the $2,000 you'll pay for only one of the two bedroom villas at Bay Lake that'll only sleep up to nine. Now, you're also going to want to browse those reliable Airbnb listings. A $900 solution may not actually be a solution for you. We get that's still really expensive. So let's come up with something potentially better, an Airbnb solution. These may not be owned by Disney, which means you're going to wind up forfeiting some of those nice Disney perks like the complimentary transportation and early theme park entry. But in exchange for all that, they could end up providing you with literally an entire house to rent for potentially hundreds of dollars less than one of Disney's deluxe villa options. 
Honestly, these Airbnbs and VRBOs can be less than even a standard moderate resort Disney stay, depending on what you want to book. Vacation homes could also come with a private pool, your own kitchen space, multiple bedrooms for everyone to have as much wiggle room as they need, instead of one member in your group potentially having to crash on a sleeper chair each night, like you could find is the case over at one of the Disney villas. That being said, the Airbnb life isn't for everyone. A stay at one of these houses does mean you will have to drive to the parks each day or book a ride share if you don't want to deal with the I-4 traffic yourself. Many of these rentals also charge extra fees and require guests to do some cleaning tasks before checking out, although I think Airbnb is trying to crack down on that. So you'll really want to pay attention to the specifics and those reviews. Please, please, please read the reviews so you aren't booking something that ends up being the wrong fit for your family. Now, depending on your trip, maybe all of the Disney hotels are wrong for your 2024 stay. Am I allowed to say that? Cause I'm gonna say it anyways. Your 2024 trip to Orlando does not have to be confined to the Disney bubble. After all, there are other parks in Orlando that exist outside of Disney. Universal Studios is made up of two parks, the City Walk Shopping District and the award-winning water park Volcano Bay. If you're planning on spending more days at Universal next year to see that new Minions area perhaps, or the upcoming DreamWorks land coming to Universal Studios Florida later in 2024, for, then a stay at one of their hotels may also be the choice. After all, the Universal Studios hotels come with their own set of hotel perks, including early park admission and free resort transportation, complimentary Universal Express Unlimited passes, which you can use to skip the lines for most of Universal's popular attractions all day long, that is a huge perk, and pool hopping privileges, meaning you can visit any of the Universal hotel pools just as long as you're staying as a guest at one of them. Now, can you keep a secret? It's okay if you can't, I'm gonna spill the beans anyways. As we get closer to the new year, we're making it our DFB resolution to cover more Universal Studios content for you in the future, along with all our Disney tips and tricks. So make sure to keep an eye out for all our Universal videos and reviews to come. Now, one final reminder, just because a certain resort doesn't fit the criteria of your trip, doesn't make it a bad hotel. In fact, some resorts we recommend checking out this year may not end up meeting the criteria for your 2025 trip. And that's because the resorts are constantly changing and updating, just like how your vacation plans constantly change and update too. But despite all the changes, the DFB team is here to make sure you're on top of them all, so you never have to be disappointed in those big, big bucks hotel purchases. Keep checking back here with us so we can keep giving you updated resort news as we get closer to 2024. And don't forget to head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com hotels and pick up that full Disney World Resort guide for absolutely free. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.